today we are just coming off the River Trent and going on to the canal at Nottingham. We were moored at Trent Bridge last night but it's quite windy at the moment and the water slapped against the boat all night and couldn't sleep so we're coming off and onto the canal for a good night's sleep tonight. But we've had a really nice morning so far, it's my birthday so we went to Cozy Club for breakfast which was really nice, I love the Cozy Club and they've got a murder mystery night on tonight with a meal so we're going to go back for that as well. So we're just at the first lock and it's got a few problems. The gates themselves leak like a sieve and they're going to be totally replaced in the next few weeks but they're also fitting electronic floodgates and we had to be helped through the lock because they were still in the process of doing that. Coming into Nottingham, there's this great mural that runs alongside the canal. Somebody spent a lot of time doing this and I think they probably tidied up all the towpath as well. A bit overgrown now, but it's not bad really for coming into a city. There was this big drainage duct in the side of the wall with graffiti of a couple of people in it. God knows how they got down there to do that. As you come into Nottingham there's the usual sort of generic modern building by the side and unfortunately the materials have let it down and they're already starting to look a bit scruffy. New stuff going up on the other side. But this is better when they repurpose old buildings and modernise them. We like it here, cured. Cheese and charcuterie, coffee and wine. As you walk into Nottingham from the canal, there's this huge area which is a big building site. It was an old shopping mall that was pulled down and the new developers wanted to build one, but they went bust, so the council have got it back and are turning it into a green space. And although Nottingham is like a lot of other cities, it has this lovely little quarter at the back near the lace market called Hockley, lots of independent shops. In the evening we went to the Cozy Club for a murder mystery dinner and here they are giving us clues and acting out and you have to guess who done it. We haven't been to one of these before and it was very entertaining and it was the Lord what done it in the end. <laughs> very warm Sunday morning we have cycled to Wollaston Park because I read about an exhibition here in the hall, Wollaston Hall and it's of a man who makes sculpture. It's so small that it can fit into the eye of a needle. He's in the Guinness Book of Records for the smallest sculpture ever made and he uses microscopes, eyelashes, spider webs to glue it together. It just sounded so intriguing. We had to come and have a look. But also at this hall is um, lots of natural history to look at. 
right up my street, so we're nearly there. The part of the park we're in is a deer park and it's all gated to stop the deer getting out. Next door to it is a golf course and all the, all the deer are over there in a bunker. So the fence between the golf course and the park is obviously nothing for them to scale. And Henry's just seen a giant parasol mushroom growing over there so he's off to go and check it out. Ooh, that's a beauty. There's loads more over there on the other side of that bunker. They look fresh enough to pick. Sorry? They look fresh enough to pick. Henry's got the mushrooms and he's hot tailing it off the golf course because he's not really supposed to be on there. <laughs> Ow, nettles. Ooh, they look gorgeous. They're not um, hardly open, they're drumsticks, so they won't have any worm in them. They're delicious, aren't they? Indeed they are, yeah. <laughs> Henry's very pleased with himself. Well, it turns out Wollaston Hall is rather magnificent. There's a lot of glass in there. Wollaston Hall has a fine collection of natural history displays and taxidermy and inside it has these wonderful features, these carved heads, beautiful details and on the wall there are two arches made from rifles I think they are but this is the exhibition that I came to see. I couldn't take photos inside because these are too small to see with a human eye but I found these online to show you and here he got not just a camel through the eye of a needle but nine it's just incredible um, Monday morning and we're slowly going down to Beeston now 
The place where we're leaving our boat for the winter is only a few miles ahead, so we've got four days to do it, so we're literally going not very far every day. And the weather continues warm, and we're going to really enjoy this last bit of our trip. Just as we come into Beeston, there's a notice about sand martins, and they're obviously nesting in those little cracks in the rock down there. Although I'm guessing as it's halfway through October that they've probably gone to their African home, I think. We've arrived at Beeston and there's very few spaces to moor. We've got into one space, but we can't quite reach the bank. We're on a wall and um, there's a bit of a drop into the water. So there's a couple of other places up there. We've paced them out. We might have to go in at a jaunty angle, but we're going to try and get in anyway. Mooring a boat isn't really like parking a car. You often can't see if the space is quite big enough to get the boat into. And then when you get there, it sort of increases in size and you find you can squeeze in. It's also easier to go in forwards than it is backwards, the other way around to a car. And you have to try to slide in without touching any of the boats that might be close by. I mean, we all have fenders on, but you don't really want to touch someone else's boat. Slide in H. Look at that, still got an inch to spare. Well, in the end, we didn't quite make it in, and that is slightly too much of a jaunty angle. But there's a fisherman further down who's moving in an hour, and we reckon we can just squeeze into the space he's in. Anyway, he's going to come and let us know. So we're going to have to just float around here for an hour or so. All safely moored up, 
and I took the rubbish over to the facilities at Beeston Lock and discovered this really beautiful hidden garden and tea shop right next to the river. This wasn't here last year or at least if it was it wasn't open. All run by volunteers, the garden. Today is our last run down the river before we come to the bottom of the Erewash Canal where we're putting our boat in for blacking and winter mooring. We've got about another half an hour to go and after this there'll be probably one more short video before we fly south with the geese. Anyway, that's the end of this video for now. Have a good week everyone, see you on the next one.